Hey everyone, it's me again, Brittany, and I'm here today to finally do my part two of my Q&A video. Yeah. And I know I said in my last video that I posted, my, in my wrap up, that I didn't like this angle, but this angle is perfect for the fact that I have to read questions off of my computer, so we're just gonna go with it for this video and hope for the best. So, in the last one, I left off on the question, who is your favorite villain? That was brought to me by Bright Yellow Book. And I still don't have an answer. I know it's been a week. I should have probably thought about this more. If anything, I'm not gonna go with a book villain. I just can't pick a favorite. You guys know I'm awful at picking favorites. But I've been re-watching The Vampire Diaries and I haven't gotten to this part yet, but I was just reminded of it today on Twitter. And Klaus has to be one of my favorite villains. Like, I love him so much as a villain, and I just, I, I don't know. I just feel like I like his backstory a lot. I feel like he's very justified in a lot of the decisions he makes. Like, not really. He shouldn't have made those decisions, but I understand them, so I'm gonna have to go with him. And then Stephanie asks, what books got you into reading? What is your favorite thing to do other than reading? So we all know that the Lemony Snicket books series of unfortunate events got me into reading and other things that I like to do besides reading there's actually a ton I, I do a lot of things besides read I know it may not seem that way especially in my reading blogs but I I love to figure skate I love to do I like to do anything except for read I like to work out I love hanging out with my friends I love I love traveling. Ah, how could I forget? I love to draw. I was an art major in my high school and it was just, it's always been kind of like a part of me now and that's why like I, I just have been wanting to get back into it, especially because of reading, because I want to draw my favorite characters, so. Brittany asks, what's your favorite genre to read? Fantasy. Natalie asks, how do you choose which book to read next? I'm a mood reader. Gabriella asks, if you could reread any book series and experience it like it was your first time reading it, what would you choose? Sorry, Luna just jumped on the desk and I'm kind of nervous as to what she's going to do with my camera. I'm going to say the Mortal Instruments books, actually. The, like, the whole series. I think it would be really fun to reread it from a fresh perspective because I'm, I love it so much from how much I loved it when I was younger, but I would really be intrigued to reread the whole story and see how, like, interesting I find it. Alex asks, who's your favorite character arc in Harry Potter? I'm assuming this just means, like, character. Dobby. Dobby's my all-time favorite Harry Potter character. He's just so pure, and I mean, I just love him. I You don't know how much I cried in Deathly Hollows, <laughs> but yeah, I, I just think it's gonna be very interesting to do my reread to see how my opinion changes on all these characters, but right at this moment, I will honestly have to say that Dobby, or maybe even Hagrid, because I, I feel so connected to Hagrid because I'm the kind of person that would totally like isolate myself from the normal people and go and hang out with fantastical beasts. Okay, also Newt's Commander then. <laughs> and Tyler Robbins asks, how do you find time to read with school work, regular work, other things taking up your time? Mm, right now, I haven't had a lot of other things to do, but when I'm in school, again, it kind of goes on the back burner. I try to read in class, as I mentioned in my last Q&A video. Not the best thing to do, but personally, I don't pay attention in class either way. I have a really difficult time paying attention in class, and I just teach myself outside of class anyways. But it, mostly, I do want to say that even when I can't physically read, I'm still listening to audiobooks. And I like to, like, re I'm really, like, putting an emphasis on it because I get that question a lot. And personally, I'm, I'm a fast reader, so when I do finally read, I can normally read a book in a day. But even when I'm not reading, when I don't have the time to read, I listen to audiobooks. So I'm technically still reading. Izzy asks, which three fictional characters would you choose to be a part of your squad, your friend group? Ooh, this is a good question. Okay, I would want Manon because... She's such a badass, and I love her. Okay, I can't just name all Throne of Glass characters, but if I did name all Throne of Glass characters, it would definitely be like Dorian Manon and Aelin. Emma Carstairs, ooh, and Rose, I wanna say her last name's Hathaway from the Vampire, uh, from the Vampire Academy books. I love all those girls so much. They're all really badass. I feel like they have very like similar character arcs and things like that. So I would definitely want to be a part of that friend group. I feel like it might be a little testy at first, but once they all realize that they're badass and on the same level, they'll like love each other. Hopefully. Hmm. 
Your name is in a different language or else I really would try to pronounce it. I'm sorry. Your question is TMI, TID, or TDA. So the Mortal Instruments, the Infernal Devices, or the Dark Artifices. And I'm gonna have to go with the Infernal Devices. I think that that's the best series that Cassandra Clare has written so far. I love all the characters. I can't believe I didn't even, I just, I just love them. I love them. I love them. Paige asks, what is it that you love so much about reading and what helps you to keep reading books that aren't your favorite? I love that it's an escape. I love that like I can start reading a book and I'm in a completely different world. I don't have to be in my headspace. I, I think that that's one of the bigger reasons why I've always loved to read is if I'm not in the best headspace, if I'm having trouble in my day to day life, I can just read and I'm not in my own head. And what keeps me reading, so especially now that I'm doing booktube and I have to read so much, I think the main thing that keeps me reading is the fact that I read for you guys. Like I expect, I know you guys expect like a certain amount from me, so I want to read for you guys. And I read for myself because again, I do want to eventually one day write a book. And I think that the more I read, the more I'll know, the more I, I, I'll gain just subconsciously on how to write. So that, that's what keeps me reading. <laughs> the Strange Noodle, <laughs> that's a funny name, asks, who's your favorite author? Sarah J Maas. So Vera asks, what are some of your favorite book to movie adaptations or what is one book series that you would like to see adapted to TV, given that they actually do it well? Uh, so my favorite book to movie adaptation, book to TV adaptation was The Vampire Diaries. Uh, if you have read The Vampire Diaries books, you know that they kept almost nothing from the books. They kept the names. And that's it. Really, everything else about the TV series is different and new. And personally, I like the TV series way better than the books. Way better. So that's why I like it so much. But if I had to turn a book into a movie, I mean, I want to say the Throne of Glass ones, but there has been talk that Throne of Glass will be turned into a TV series, so I'm kind of excited about that. And A Court of, Mist or an a Court of Thorns and Roses is going to be turned into a movie series, so that's really cool. So... I kind of want to go with The Dark Artifices. I actually think that it would be a really cool movie because I kind of read it like a movie when I'm reading those books. So it would be interesting. Plus it's in California. I just, I just, maybe that's why I'm getting such like movie vibes from it, but I would definitely want to see that into a movie. Ashley asks, how do you get out of reading slump? Mostly audiobooks and just reading the books that I like to read. Nez Bez Baby Cakes asks, way to go and keep up the good work. I wanted to know if you plan on doing any readathons anytime soon. Uh, I did just do the book a thon so that was super fun. I wanted to participate in the Newt's readathon that's going to be happening, but I know that you had to have done your owls beforehand, and I know that there was a way to do your owls now so that you could participate in the Newt's, but I decided that that was just a lot of work and then I'm just gonna do it next year so for right now I don't think there's any other readathons that I'm interested in but we'll see as time goes on. Paulina asks what is the book that had the most impact on you that made you the person you are right now? That's a really big question. I I think all books have had an impact on me. I really do. I think that the kind of book that I go for is the kind of person I want to be. I. I very much love the the heroine who isn't scared to take anyone's shit and she is going to come out on top in the end. I think that that is like my favorite character arc and the more I read it the more I try to embody it because I would love to be that. I would love to be just, I mean, a badass girl who would never take anyone's shit and who will do anything to achieve her goals and I think that that's the character arc that I read in almost every book. So there's not one book in particular that I think has changed me. Uh, yeah, all the books that I read have a certain impact on me. All the books that I love anyways. Emily asks, what's your least favorite book of the year so far? Definitely Eleanor and Park. <laughs> I don't know how many times I'm gonna talk about it, but probably for the rest of the year, there's just not a book that I've hated that much in a long time. I, I always finish books. But if I could have DNF'd that book, I would have DNF'd that book. It was just not worth it for me. I loved Fangirl, and that was not on Fangirl's level. I'm sorry, Eleanor and Park. Megan Her Books asks, what has reading done to improve your life? Um, everything. Uh, reading has done everything for my life. If I had never read, I would have never known that I wanted to be an author. So that's like my career 
goal. So it has set my future. If I had never read, I would have never known the kind of person that I wanted to be. So that also set like the kind of person that I am. It's just reading has done everything for me, like absolutely everything. It's helped me through hard times. It's encouraged me. It's, it's, it's everything. Yeah. Anna asks, how do you manage to read so many books in a month? Uh, I'm a very fast reader. I, I tend to just actually read very fast and still be able to comprehend what I'm reading and remember it. And audiobooks. Abby asks, does your roommate know you vlog now? No, she never found out that I know of. Uh, she just moved out actually like a, a few days ago. And I just never got to the point of telling her that I haven't really told many of my friends. There's only like my boyfriend and then my very best friend Sammy, who knows? It's just, it's something that I haven't opened up to about people yet. It's like, I don't know. I don't know why. It's like, I really want to keep this part of my life to myself for right now. I just, I feel weird. Like everyone knows I'm a book nerd. I just don't think they know I'm this much of a book nerd. So, and I don't think they'd care, but it's just, I, I'm still keeping it to myself. A nerdy book addict asked for my question, why do you like writing? Why did you start writing? I started writing because I wanted to make the story that I wanted to read. But it's just that easy. There was like ideas in my head and it was mostly like people that I wanted to be. Like that was why I would write because I was like, that would be so cool if that was me. Simply Marie asks, what Harry Potter house are you? I'm a Gryffindor. I have taken the test many a times and every time. I used to think that I would be a Slytherin. I totally thought I was gonna be a Slytherin. Every single time I take that test, I'm a freaking Gryffindor. I, there's like, I've never gotten a different response. I've even taken the Times one and I was vastly Gryffindor over everything else. So yeah, maybe one day I'm gonna do a whole video where I retake the quizzes again and I don't know. I think it'll be fun. Abel asks, what do you think of self-published authors and have you ever read a book from any of them? I don't know much about self-publishing. I only recently heard the term in general. Like, I mean, recently being like a couple years, but I had never heard of that before and I never knew that it was a route that people could take. Personally, I don't think I would ever do self-publishing, but I never know. It's just the fact that I, I've i always imagined being a more traditional publishing route and I think that I'm, I'm kind of a lazy person, guys, if you didn't know, and I think self-publishing would be a lot of work and I would be very, very anxious the whole time because I also have, I have anxiety. I don't know if it's bad or anything, but I, I have anxiety. I just think it would be too much for me. And have I ever read from any of them? Not knowingly, but I did actually recently make a purchase of a book that I know is self-published and I'm really, really excited to read it, so yeah, keep an eye out for that. Dr. Fox says, my question, which is admittedly a superficial one, what are your top three book covers? And no, you cannot list Never Night three times. <laughs> you know me so well. So since I always talk about the UK editions of Never Night, I didn't pull it out because I'm sure you guys have seen it enough times on my channel. So I picked a different three and I'm actually really happy with these. So the first cover buy that I ever made was The Diviners by Libba Bray. This is just so gorgeous. I love it so much. I'm so sad that they did cover changes after this and like naked it's even more beautiful it's just it's a gorgeous gorgeous book and my second cover by admittedly was strange the dreamer by laney taylor this is the uk edition i did not have any idea what this was even about i didn't even know that i'd read other laney taylor books when i had bought this and it's just so gorgeous and last but not least crooked kingdom i was in between this one and obviously six of crows but Crooked Kingdom definitely wins out for me. I like the crow in this one a lot more and I just love that it's actually like the little blank spaces are the towers coming up and like the sprayed edges. They're just they're gorgeous books. Gorgeous, gorgeous books. JT says, I'd like to know about your school slash career path. I am a psychology major with a minor in criminal justice. I originally wanted to be a forensic psychologist and it was it wasn't until the start of my junior year 
that I was just at my like happiest place. I was I was my happiest person and I realized that whatever I want to do for the rest of my life, I just want to do something that makes me happy. And it clicked so instantly that reading makes me happy. Writing would make me incredibly happy. And I was always really nervous to take that path because I know it's very unsure. You never know if you will get published. You never know if even if you get published, if you'll ever make a name for yourself. It's a very very rocky road and I like very sure paths for the most well I don't like them but I knew that I should be on a sure path that way I knew that no matter what I do I would I wouldn't I don't know fail and but I just kind of decided to go for it like I'm still getting my degree in psychology and criminal justice if anything maybe one day I'll go back to it if this doesn't work out but yeah I, I want I want to write a book I want to be a published author Jasmine's question is if you had to read one genre for the rest of your life, what would it be? Fantasy. Yeah. High fantasy all the way. Megan asks, what is your favorite childhood book? Probably Aesop's Fables. My dad would always read me stories from them. Arian asks, how long have you been collecting books? I, my whole life, I've always bought and kept almost every book that I've ever read except for whatever I would read at the school library. I, I've always collected those books, but I didn't really seriously start collecting books until I started my booktube channel in 2014. So I've been collecting books seriously for four years now. <laughs> Hannah's question is, what is your all-time favorite series? Uh, I think we've decided that it's Throne of Glass. I didn't want to admit it to myself, but it's definitely Throne of Glass. <laughs> Emma asks, what are you, who are your favorite booktubers and your most disliked book? Oh, I love a ton of booktubers. Uh, there's so many people that I will automatically watch whatever video they post any day, and there's like at least 20 of them. And I love them all so much, and I just can't even like, right at this moment, I can't think of them off my top of my head. Maybe one day I'll do like a whole recommendations video, or like booktuber recommend, booktuber shout out type video. I don't know. And my most disliked book of all time, hmm. Eleanor and Park. <laughs> I really can't think of another book that I hated. So, well, okay. I really, really didn't like the Fallen Kingdoms books. Really didn't like them. So, if I had to go for another one, probably not the last one, but maybe the fourth one. Yeah. Amy's question is, how do you choose your next read? I'm a mood reader. Mel, Mael, Mel. I'm sorry. If you could spend one day with a book character, who would it be and why? I think I would spend my day, because obviously I don't want to talk about Throne of Glass again, uh, with Daryl from the Red Rising series. I just, no, Mustang from the Red Rising series. I just feel like I have so much to learn from her and she is just precious but also badass and I don't know I just I think it would be a lot of fun plus that means I would get to spend the day in like the Red Rising world and I'm very curious what it's like I, I mean I don't know if I would be able to because I'm not color-coded maybe I could be a brown Danielle talks a lot asks have you read the Fallen Kingdom series by Morgan Rhodes because if not you need to start <laughs> oh god I'm so sorry I forgot about this question I've been bashing Fallen Kingdoms for I feel like my entire community not the whole thing, but like a couple questions. I have read the Fallen Kingdom series. I forced myself to read the whole series. I thought I was going to love it going into it. And to be fair, it was like right off my high from Throne of Glass when I first read the series. And this was maybe like 2012 or something like that. Yeah, 2012. No, that doesn't make sense. 2015. It was 2015 when I finally picked up the Fallen Kingdom series. And I really, 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 really wanted to like it because I it has all the elements that I would totally love and then I was reading it and I did not like it. I, I forced myself through the first one being like, yeah, this is great, this is awesome. I forced myself through the second one being like, yeah, this, this is great, this is awesome. And then after the third one, it really went downhill for me. I, I just, I lost passion for the characters, I think, and it was... I don't know. For whatever reason, it just didn't sit well with me, even though it had everything that I should have loved. I don't get it. I really don't. Books with Kiana asks, my question is, how do you fall in <laughs> how did you fall in love with Harry Potter? Well, it was a gloomy day in seventh grade history. 
<laughs> know what it really was. I had just finished reading whatever book I was reading and under my desk someone had left a paperback cover or a paperback of The Sorcerer's Stone and I had never wanted to read it. My grandma had given me The Sorcerer's Stone in hardcover so long ago. That might have been the first book that I ever owned and I just didn't want to read it. But I had nothing else to read and I was really bored. As I say, I like to read in class and so I, I grabbed it. Also, I'm so sorry to whoever left that Harry Potter and Sorcerer's Stone book in that class because I took it because I loved it. I was like sitting there, I read the first 60 pages in the blink of an eye and I didn't even notice that time was passing. I, I fell in love. I couldn't believe that I hadn't read the book. Swedish Simmer asks, if you could only read one genre, which genre would it be? Fancy. Isis asks, if you could pick a world from any of the books that you've read that you could visit, which one would it be? Okay, so honestly, Aurelia is pretty depressing right now with everything that's going on with the king and stuff, so probably not that world in Throne of Glass. Uh, I've, I've already said I wanna visit Weep. So not that, because I've already said it. Um, probably actually the Shadow and Bone world, like the Grisha world. I think it would be really interesting. Like, I don't know if Ketterdam exactly, because it's like not great, but the little palace and everything that's going on in Shadow and Bone, I think would be really cool. Nicole S asks, what made you want to start BookTube? I just, I don't know guys, I just really wanted to do it. I wanted to talk about books with someone because I ha I know almost n no people that read and definitely not books that I read, so I needed an outlet. Zurian's question is, in which fictional world would you want to live in? Ooh, live in, that's different. So like not visiting, living. Do, do I gain magic if I go to the world? Because in that case, then I'm definitely gonna say Aurelia from Throne of Glass. I think I would have a lot of fun there. But if I don't, then I would probably pick just a plain, plain world. Ooh, the City of Bones world. Like I know technically it's our world, but if our world had that kind of magic going on, I would want to live there. Book Talk with Meg's question is, if you could go back and reread a book for the first time, what would it be? I think I answered this one earlier, so look back to that question. <laughs> France asks, uh, what are your pet peeves when it comes to books or reading? Um, I used to hate when people annotated in their books, but now I've been doing it with my Throne of Glass books, so I can't really talk about it. I don't like it when people dog ear pages. <laughs> Hurts my soul. That's kind of it. I don't have a lot of pet peeves, I think. Katja asks, what is your first book you remember reading? Aesop's Fables or the Lemony Snicket books, the series of unfortunate events. Ayn asks, if you could be a fictional character for a day, who would it be and why? I would want to be Lysandra. So, um, spoiler alert, if you haven't read past uh, Queen of Shadows, then you probably don't want to hear this, so I'll hold my hand up until I'm done talking about it. I would want to shapeshift. I really want to turn into like anything that I want. I want to be a dog. I want to be a man. I want to, I want to, I want to shapeshift. I think it would be fun. Okay, done. In Book Phil's question asks, what is your favorite Throne of Glass book? Air Fire. I have finally decided it's Air Fire. Amanda Dempsey asks, how long have you been a booktuber? No, technically only a few months because even though I did start my channel so long ago, I just don't really consider myself a booktuber in that amount of time. I think that it should only be the amount of time that I've been really active and that's the past few months since hmm, April or May. Book Alenic. Is there a particular place, day, or period you associate with reading? Not really. I can read almost anywhere, so I guess I don't have like a specific place that I would always read in and or time because I've been reading for so long that it's just like it's always it's always reading time. Hmm. Emily and family asks what are your top three current faves? I choose current because all time is just way too hard. True. Mm, okay so she didn't specify whether it's books or series so I think I'm gonna go with series so that I don't have to pick favorites overall. Throne of Glass right now because I'm doing my reread and I'm just loving it. Crown's Game. I actually ended up loving that so much more than I thought I would. And I'm gonna have to go with Nevernight because it's, it's definitely a current fave right now. Oh, Demon King. Okay. Cross out uh, Nevernight because I talk about it all the time. We're not crossing out Throne of Glass. I love it too much. Um, but Demon King is definitely a current fave. It's so fantastic. F.A. asks, what's your least favorite book trope? Insta-love. I hate 
insta-love. It doesn't make any sense to me. Why do you instantaneously love someone? Especially, I don't know, because recently I read a book where the people actually hated each other and they had reason to hate each other. And then they were in love in like two seconds and it was very frustrating. I just hate insta-love. It can really ruin a story for me. Book Orbit asks, why do you love fantasy so much and all-time favorite fantasy book? I love fantasy because it is a completely different world. Like, I wish I had magic. I wish that this, like, magic system was in place instead of physics. I don't know. But I just, I love it so much. It's a completely different world. It's a completely different reading experience. You're somewhere else entirely. And my all-time favorite fantasy book, okay, quality-wise, I'm honestly gonna say Name of the Wind. Name of the Wind is one of the best written fantasy worlds that I've ever read. I just think it's so much thought went into it and I, I, I love the magic system. I like how things are explained. I just, I think that it's one of the best explained magic worlds that I've ever read. So I'm gonna have to go with The Name of the Wind. Becca's Book Club, oh, one of the winners, asks, what was your favorite book when you were a kid? I, Aesop's Fables or The Bad Beginning. Terrell asks, What's your favorite Ellen Hopkins novel? Who are some of your favorite YA contemporary pairings? And what underrated YA fantasy series do you think you should should deserve more hype on booktube? So what's your favorite Ellen Hopkins novel? Probably, so the first one I ever read was Crank and I have a very like deep attachment to it because of that. But, and I like that it only follows one person. All her other books tend to follow like multiple people. So I'm gonna have to go with the Crank like trilogy and then my, some of my favorite YA contemporary pairings. I don't read a lot of contemporary, guys. Um, so I don't really have any favorite contemporary pairings. Um, probably the pairing in Fangirl. I'm not really going to talk about it just in case no one's read it. But like, you know who it is if you've read it. And what underrated YA fantasy series do you think should deserve more hype on booktube? I want to go with the crowns game. I normally, I always have issues like answering these underrated ones but I hear almost nothing about Crown's Game and it's actually fantastic. It's not full-on fantasy, it's more urban fantasy if anything but I love it a lot. Er, what other ones are full fantasy? I don't want to say The Demon King again but I feel like that doesn't get as much, a lot of hype either. Like I've only really ever heard Peru's project like Reagan talk about it and she's a big fantasy buff so I'm not really sure if it's that popular, but I think it should be. I've, I've only read the first one, though, so I can't have, like, a thorough opinion. Jose's Bookshelf asks, What classic book should a reader start reading first? That is a fantastic question because someone needs to answer that for me as well. I have had issues reading classics in the past, which I've mentioned. I haven't come across one that I love yet, and I really would like... So if, if you guys are watching this right now and you like classics, tell me what classic book a reader should start reading first, especially one like me, who, you know, loves young adult. So, good question, Jose. I hope someone can answer it for us. <laughs> Katie's Book Nook asks, even though you technically asked us first, what made you a reader and why do you continue to be a reader? I think I've kind of answered this already in the video, but it's just basically, it's my escape. I love it. And my dad put a book in my hands and I just, well, I didn't have a lot of options. He told me what to do. <laughs> Chelsea Roman asks, uh, what are your recommendations for reading many books in a month? Audiobooks. Audiobooks, audiobooks, audiobooks. I will shout it to the rooftops. Audiobooks. Amy asks, what is your favorite place to read? Any creative spots? Uh, I don't know. I'm trying to make this like a very nice like little book reading like nook. I think it would be really great. I just haven't gotten a couch yet, so that's my creative spot. But Elena asks, how do you get out of a reading slump? I read my favorite books. Kat asks, this is more of an opinion question than getting to know you, but seeing your reading vlogs really made me want to get back into the Percy Jackson universe. And was just wondering what order you would recommend reading all the books set in the demigods universe, or if an order even is necessary. I think an order is definitely necessary. I believe A Dash of Ash has made a video, an entire video explaining it. I, it's basically my publication date. I think that Rick Riordan does a very good job of just continuing on the story as he public, public, publicizes them. Yeah, it, it, I definitely feel like it's publication date. <laughs> Brooke's question is, if you could live in one fictional world, what world would you choose? I think we've decided on, on Aurelia. Pellin asks, 
How do you get out of a reading slump? I read my favorite books. Jackley asks, uh, before you started your channel, was it hard not having someone to talk to books about? Uh, it wasn't hard. I didn't realize that people talked about books. I just, I had a lot of emotions to myself and I just kept them to myself and I was like, cool. I, I, that's kind of like my only child thing though. Like I always just was by myself. So it wasn't new for me. It was only when I found booktube where I realized that people talked about books where I was like, I want to talk about books. Like, that was kind of exactly how it happened. Mystery Date with a Book asks, when you were seven or eight, what did you want to be when you grow up? Oh, well, that's a good question. Okay, so when I was seven or eight, I wanted to be a spy or a geologist. I think I started off being wanting to be a geologist and then I moved on to spy. Courtney's Reads asks, what is your least favorite genre to read from? His, uh, hmm, nonfiction. Ariana asks, have you ever thought about or wanted a career that has to do with majoring in English or writing? I do want to be a writer. I just, uh, personally, I know that it can help. I have talked to a lot of creative writing majors and things like that, and they say that yes, it does help, but a lot of them have said that it's not 100% necessary, so I never wanted to go into an English major. Bella asks, what are your thoughts about unhauling and would you do it? I would definitely, definitely do it. I think it's great. Um, I don't, I just, personally, I'm kind of a pack rat about my books. I love my books. I, I still have books from when I was eight. Hello. And I just don't think that it's entirely realistic for me at this point. But I know that if I get to have too many books, I would definitely decide to unhaul them because there's just no point in keeping books that you don't want. Gracia asks, what are your top five places in the world you'd like to travel, excluding Russia? <laughs> Greece. I really, really want to go to Greece. Go to Hawaii. I've never been. Ooh, Japan. To London. Spain. I want to go to Spain. Tyrone asks, who's your favorite author and their best book in your opinion? Sarah J. Maas and... Whew, it's in between Air of Fire and A Court of Mist and Fury. They both actually deal with kind of similar topics, or not similar topics, but their characters are kind of going through similar things, which is interesting because I never really put that together until right now when I realized those are my two favorite books that she's made. Cozy Reed asks, what is the first book you remember truly cherishing? The Bad Beginning. Faith's question is, what got you into reading slash collecting books? I feel like that's kind of been answered throughout this, but just, you know, I, I always like to read and then I, I like to own the things that I read. <laughs> Ashley's question is, how old are you? Where are you from? What is the reason you started your booktube channel? I am 21. I'm gonna be 22 this month, so that's interesting. Uh, I am from, are you ready guys? I'm pretty sure you've guessed it from everything that I've posted and everything, but I live in Vegas and Las Vegas and Nevada, and I've never talked about it, so wow, explosive. But I'm, I'm pretty sure you've guessed it, especially with my reading vlogs. Uh, and three, what is the reason you started your booktube channel? I didn't even know it was a thing, and then when I found out it was a thing, I wanted to join in on this. <laughs> Rose asks, what is a book slash series that you would recommend to almost anyone? <sighs> Throne of Glass. But also Harry Potter. Actually, Harry Potter is the one that I'd recommend to anyone. Throne of Glass, I feel like I only recommend to girls because I'm like, you're gonna love it. But like, I would, I don't think I'd recommend it to guys very much. I don't know why. <laughs> I look like I have short hair right now. That's, ooh. I mean, like, I like it, but like, that, that's gonna make me wanna cut my hair and then I'm gonna hate myself. T for books' question is, how did you meet your boyfriend? Oh, I did kind of talk about this in my part one Q&A, but basically I started talking about Star Wars because I knew he liked Star Wars. Victoria asks, what has been the biggest impact on your life regarding a specific book or being a reader? I've kind of answered this. I just, I don't think there's one that specifically has made an impact. I just think overall, every book that I've ever read has had an impact on me. Believe MCD asks, how did you first start filming for YouTube? Were you nervous people you knew would find it? So I first started filming just, just cause I wanted to. It was very like on a whim. And then I was nervous that people would find it. I I just, I still don't even want like that many people to know. I haven't told some of like my friends. Oh my God. I'm gonna start kind of hurrying through these because we're getting into a very long video again. Carla Jean Reads asks, what is your top five books at the moment? I feel like I've kind of answered this overall, but I think you're getting an idea of what my favorite books are. <laughs> Angela asks, what made you the reader that you are today? 
my dad. Eleanor asks, if you are ever gonna write a book, what genre is it gonna be? Definitely fantasy. It's it's for sure gonna be fantasy. I might one day do like a sci-fi book or even a contemporary, but I definitely will start with fantasy. Sam Payne asks, what is the one book that made you a reader, aka the book you devoured and that made you seek out books, collect them, etc. The Bad Beginning. Alexis's question is, what is a trope everyone seems to dislike but you enjoy? <sighs> Probably the bad boy trope. I know that everyone hates it now, like everyone just sees a lot of problems in it, but I still love it so much. I, I, I don't know why the problematic bad boy is like my dream in a book. Asma asks, since since when you became a reader? Uh, I was probably seven or eight when my dad put like the first real book in my hands and I decided like, oh, I like this. Abby's question is, where do you get your audiobooks and how do you prefer listening to them? I get my audiobooks from Audible. I have tried Scribd. I think that eventually I'm going to switch over to Scribd because Audible is a little too expensive and you only get one. When Scribd you get like many. And I mostly though get all my audiobooks from Overdrive. It's like an app that lets you channel your library's audiobook collection and you can rent them. So I really like Overdrive. And how do I prefer listening to them? I listen to them when I'm getting ready, or when I'm in the car, or when I'm cooking. Just basically at all the time, or cleaning especially, and where I could be listening to music, but instead I decided I'm reading a book. My cat is splooted. I need to show you. He's looking out a window. Nikki's question is, how do you manage your time for reading and life in general? I don't, either I pick one or the other, but mostly audiobooks. <laughs> Christina's question is, if you could request any author to write your ideal book story, who would it be? Lainey Taylor, because her writing is gorgeous. Her writing is so gorgeous. So if I can give her like my, my favorite book idea and have her write it and see how she'd write it, I would gobble it up. I'd love it. Duska Duska asks, have you always been a bookworm, I mean from childhood, or were you older when you started reading as much? I've always been a bookworm. I've always loved reading. I definitely wasn't at this level of a bookworm until I got older, but I've always been a bookworm. Patty's question is, if you were to write a book, what genre would it be? Fantasy. Helena's question is, tell us how you discovered booktube and why you decided to become a part of it. I think it was because of Divergent. I think I mentioned this in my last Q&A. Victoria asks, do you remember the first book you ever got? No, not the first one I ever got. I The first one that I ever really remember getting is The Bad Beginning, but there was definitely, definitely books before then. Jamie's question is, what is the best thing you like about being a booktuber? Um, talking to you guys, really. Just like in the comments, like I love seeing responses to my videos and what you guys think of the same things that I'm talking about. Emma's question is, what was the first book you became obsessed with? I'm pretty sure it was The Bad Beginning. Like I would read those books nonstop. She asks, um, you seem to read quite fast, so how do you read many books? I've always been a really fast reader. I don't honestly know. I think it might have been just because I started reading so early that it was, it really clicked for me. Kayla's question is, what is your favorite place to read? Probably the couch. Rebecca's question is, are you planning to write a book at some point in the future? Yes. I'm a professional bookworm, S-O-F-I-S. Ask who's your favorite villain? I don't know, guys. Like, all-time favorite villain, I'm really not sure. I, I I appreciate villains, I just haven't decided on a favorite yet. Mandy's question is, if you could help your favorite author write a book, who would it be? Sarah J. Maas. Yasmin's question is, top favorite book series and why? Throne of Glass. It just came at the right point in my life, it was just exactly what I needed and it has all the elements of the story that I love, so it was, it was bound to be a favorite. Kristen Marie's question is, were you nervous to start a YouTube channel, restart your channel? Uh, to start it, not really. To restart it, yes, because I just know myself and I know that I have failed in the past to continue making videos, so it was something I was nervous to do because I didn't want to fail you guys again. Tiffany's question is, where did you get that shirt? Uh, I don't remember. Oh, okay, the shirt I was wearing in my Q&A announcement video, it was my boyfriend's. He, It doesn't fit him right, so he just gave it to me and I love wearing my boyfriend. I'm currently wearing one of my boyfriend's shirts. I just always like tie them up. I, I steal them from him, I don't know. Gabriella's question is, who is your favorite character in the Shadowhunter Chronicles? The whole thing. Just out of like the mortal instruments, it's Jace, but in the Infernal Devices, I love them all. Brooke asks, you mentioned studying. Can you tell us what your major is in college tips and having that great independence you have and how you come across so not scared of anything, lol. So, as I said, uh, I'm a psych major with a minor in criminal justice. Oh my god, my camera battery's dying now. I'm really not very scared of many things. I'm 
very much like an impulsive risk taker. I, I know it doesn't seem like that on my channel, but I'm very impulsive. I'm very procrastinator. I, I'm not the best student. Oh, well, I didn't used to be. I'm, I'm a really great student now, even though I have those habits. It's just like learning to deal with your own habits. I've never been scared though of brand new situations. Like I, I can really talk well with people. I I think it helped a lot that I did join a sorority, even though I didn't have a great experience with my sorority personally. Sororities aren't for everyone, but I it did help every person. It's just, I don't know. Maybe I'll make a whole video if you guys are really interested about this, because I feel like there's a lot to talk about. Now my camera battery's gonna die. Kasha asks, what is your go-to comfort book? Accord to Mr. Fury. Catherine asks, since I've been thinking of starting a booktube for a while, I'd like you to tell us what prompted you to start this channel. We've talked about it a little. Taylor asks, what's a book that you can remember got you out of a huge reading slump? I've read every Sarah J Maas book even when I was in huge reading slumps, but it didn't necessarily help me get out of them, so I'm not really sure. I'd have to really think about this. Paper Tea and Book Flower asks, if you could be best friends with a character, who would you choose and why? If you could have a magical ability, what would it be? Where would you love to travel to? Um, we've talked about traveling, we kind of have talked about the best friend thing. Uh, for magical abilities, I would pro- okay, so elemental wise, I think I've always related to fire, always. I've, I've always picked fire Pokemon, I've always just, I loved it in Avatar. I've always just resonated more with fire, my personality fits it very well just because I'm so impulsive, so rash and not, yeah, I don't know, not the most peaceful at home with myself first, or, I don't know. So I think you would have something to do with fire. Jasmine asks, what's your method for overcoming or even avoiding a book hangover? I don't have one. When I have a book hangover, it's real and I just have to reread that book over and over and over again. <laughs> Nicole asks, uh, name a book that changed your life. The Bad Beginning. Sahara asks, what is your favorite Panic! at the Disco song? Ooh, all-time favorite? I really, really love This Is Gospel from his Too Weird to Live, Too Rare to Die, I think it's called. Um, but from his like first album, I've always really, really loved Lying is the most fun a girl can have without taking her clothes off. I always really loved that song too. Uh, Nine in the Afternoon, I think that's a really great song. I love Panic. Yvonne asks, are you doing school? What is your ultimate favorite book? I am doing school. I'm at a university right now. Uh, what is your ultimate favorite book? I don't have one. I'm not asked the most beautiful hardcover you own. I showed my top three earlier. It has to be one of those. Lux asks, uh, my question for you is what are your pet peeves when it comes to books or reading? I kind of talked about this too. Uh, so I don't really have that many, I don't think. I talked about maybe some of the ones that I have in my 25 bookish facts about me. I just can't really remember what they are anymore besides the dog earring. Okay, so that is it for my Q&A. This is it, this is part two, this is the final part. And uh, it is so long and my camera battery is about to die. So I'm just gonna log off right now. Thank you guys so, so much for watching. Thank you so much for your questions. I really appreciated it. And hopefully I can edit this in a timely manner. Okay, bye.